welcome to learn instrumentation engineering in this channel we are learning basic instrumentation and control system concepts so that includes process measurement and its applications control systems and techniques and latest updates on technologies in the instrumentation and automation field so if you are an instrument student a budding engineer or even an expertise in the field of instrumentation engineering you should subscribe to our channel to gain more knowledge and value addition so in this video we will be uh, discussing detail on the uh, different components available in a control valve so let's get into this video come on so you could see over here this is a control valve you could see the process fluid enters from the left and it exits to the right side so the left side is basically uh, the upstream of a control valve and right side is basically the downstream of a control valve and you could see over here that uh, there is a plug and a seat arrangement and this is how the process fluid enters from the downstream and it gets into the trim port and then it just exits exit outside to the downstream of a control valve the, this is the inlet port and outlet port and finally this is the valve stem and the valve plug so this is inside of a control valve body i will detail explain the components you could see over here the plug moves vertically up and down is a sliding stem control valve right and you could see over here you give the instrument air pressure through the tubing it enters into the actual to diaphragm and this diaphragm is made up of a nitrile rubber a different components of the rubber and then it pushes the spring and the spring in turn pushes the valve stem downwards on upwards depending upon the air pressure and the plug or uh, moves up and down to allow the process fluid from upstream to downstream so this is how it controls the process fluid so this is how a yeah, control valve works okay and now you could see over here this is a different parts of a control valve body so as i said earlier the let's see from the bottom right so you could see the upstream that is the inlet port and downstream is the outlet port you have a wall body a seat ring could you see this and this is a seat ring where the plug seats if the plug is fully seated there is no flow the flow is restricted and if the plug moves away from the seat it allows the process fluid to flow from inlet port to the outlet port and you could see over here we have a cage guided seat see that different types of seat and this is uh, a diff this is a type this is a cage guider i will explain you what's the application of a cage guider in the later videos and you could see over here we also have a seat ring gasket for any leakage in the train and then uh, we have a wall bonnet and uh, basically what does a wall bonnet do it is a major pressure containing component so the bonnet is bolted or threaded onto the valve body and it locates and guides the valve stem also it includes the bore for the packing it's a gland packing we do uh, tell so the bonnet uh, includes a yoke it is used mainly to mount the actuator right and uh, this is the valve bonnet and what is basically trim you could see the trim refers to an internal process vector components so the process fluid uh, flows from inlet port to outlet port and in between them we have the plug steam uh, system or uh, the cage the seat ring so these components gets vectored by the process uh, fluid so this is called the trim area right and we have a gasket so it's a bonnet gasket so it provides a seal between the body and the bonnet mating surface 
a cage casket provides a seal between the bonnet and the cage mating surface right and next we have the gland packing so the packing prevents leakage along the wall stem so the process fluid with contained in the trim doesn't leak uh, through the uh, actuate uh, the bonnet so that is why we have a gland packing so the packing is compressed to form a tight seal between the packing box wall and the wall plug stem by tightening the packing flange nets so as the nets are tightened the packing flanges transfers the compressive load to the packing so this is how uh, the uh, packing works this is the main application of the packing so this is uh, how uh, the different components of a control wall uh, is available and this is the actuator yoke lock nut and this is used to um, mount the actuator with the wall body and finally there's a stem uh, the stem is uh, being connected to the actuator die from spring right so this is a uh, fully of the control wall so we have uh, fully explained what is available in the control wall body so i think you got a very good understanding and idea of the uh, different components available in the control wall body so if this video is very useful to you just hit the like button and uh, share to instrument community and if you want to watch such instrumentation and control system videos do subscribe to our channel learn instrumentation engineering thank you